We, uh, I, I have two o'clock on the nose. Um, and we'll have some people filter in here. Um, hello, everyone. I'm, I'll just uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to the, I believe this is the fifth installment of our AI speaker series um, for the 2024 spring semester. And, and actually, Tanya's second time being here, both by uh, popular demand and in fact, she's just got so much great stuff to say. Um, so just a heads up, this uh, session will be recorded for anyone who couldn't make it today. Um, I'm your host, Jamie Warren, with the Teaching and Learning Department, and I'll be monitoring the chat throughout the presentation and making every uh, making every attempt to, for this to go smoothly today. Um, so our topic today is, is called Ed, uh, AI EdQuest, Unleashing the Power of Ed, yeah, AI in Learning. Um, I know as we navigate through the complexities and the challenges of incorporating AI, uh, we're really fortunate to have Tanya today as our, what I'm titling our resident visionary. Uh, she is keenly positioned as both an expert in AI and an experienced educator uh, with a deep passion for edge education. Um, she's been instrumental in designing and implementing solutions into new course offerings, and um, I know her insights uh, will be valuable for us today. So uh, let's get the conversation started, um, and I'll uh, give you give a warm welcome to uh, our incredible innovator and educator, Tanya Stevens. So let's make some noise. Well, thank you, Jamie. That was super sweet. Gosh, I wish I, I might have to record that piece and like play it for my mom. <laughs> well, she'll love that. We'll, we'll make a clip just for that. Yeah, she'll love it. So good afternoon, everyone. And today what we're going to be looking at is really just the exciting potential of using um, artificial intelligence to enhance learning. And I approach this like many things. I, I, I'm a student, perpetual student. Uh, I love learning new things. And I love having someone to help me learn new things. And that's something that I've really found with the um, AI chatbots that we're going to be looking at, is there are ways that we can use those to help us learn. And then I will show you as a big surprise, and this one I stumbled across last night, and I was like, oh my gosh, awesome, um, how we can use the uh, chatbot to help us learn directly from our students. So I'm excited about that. So we'll get started. Um, full warning, I have had like a Diet Mountain Dew. Yes. And I'm talking about technology, so I'm probably way, way hyped. I apologize in advance. I can't help it. I get stoked. All right. So the first thing we're going to look at is how about um, using AI as a tutor for a foreign language? So we'll take a look at this. Now, my goal is to do this all in real time. I have backups just in case, in case it uh, doesn't happen in real time. But one of the things that I am looking at, I'm going to use a variety of chatbots here, is I'm starting off with Gemini from Google. And the thing is, I'm learning Japanese. But um, I've been stumped. When it asked me to put the words in the right places, I have been tripped up by these NA adjectives. So um, I was like, okay, help me out here. So I've asked Gemini, I'm learning Japanese. Can you explain um, any adjectives to me? And they're like, yes, here you go. And so um, I have to tell you, when I read this, it really, this light bulb went off in my head because I had not put together that it was describing nouns. And I know that sounds crazy, but it just, it didn't click for me because there are other adjectives that are out there um, in Japanese and I was getting them constantly confused. So going through here, it gave me some really great information about when to use it and how to use it. Um, it gave me some great examples. Then it also provided me with some really nifty uh, learning resources. So um, I went out to the first one here and it was fantastic. A uh, table of contents and it helped me learn more about the adjectives. It also provided me with another really good resource um, that I enjoyed. Um, There's a complete guide to Japanese and you can click on it and it's free and you can download that. And to me, that I feel like that's the part I've been missing in my learning. Um, I've been using two different um, platforms to learn Japanese, but really the grammar just has not made it into my brain for whatever the reasons. 
So um, I was super excited to um, use Gemini to uh, figure out how to do that. So that is one way that I have used it that um, I have really enjoyed. Another way that I have enjoyed um, using for um, the chatbots for learning is as follows. So I have asked Gemini here to create a quiz around data encapsulation in the OSI model. Don't show me the answers, but quiz me one question at a time. And if I miss a question, recommend a learning resource to me to strengthen my knowledge. Then I ask it, do you understand? And it says, absolutely, let's test your knowledge. Remember, I'm not going to show you the answers, but I'll point you towards some helpful resource if you get one wrong. So my first question is, in, in the OSI model, which layer is responsible for adding headers containing source and destination MAC addresses to the data packet? So uh, I'll come in here and put in the answer, or what I think the answer is. Uh, I should be putting data link, not data. And then um, he'll tell me, hey, yeah, you got this right. And it'll add some more resources for me. Now it's got another question for me. And it asked me, are you ready for that next one? And I'm like, yes, go ahead, give it to me. So now it's asking me, hey, as the data is traveling down that OSI model layer undergoing encapsulation, what happens to the overall size of the data packet? Does it remain the same size? Does it increase? Does it decrease? Um, I'm going to be like, ah, uh, increase. And it's like, yeah, hey, you got it. And it's provided me with another resource here to look at how data encapsulation and de-encapsulation works. Then it's ready for another question. So I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm ready for another question. And this time, whatever it asks me, I'm gonna answer wrong. So at the receiving end, the data packet undergoes the process opposite to encapsulation. What is this called? Um, and I'm going to call it um, Oscar. Sounds like a really good answer. And so <laughs> at first it's like, hey, this answer is so weird. I think you accidentally typed it in. So here's the question again. Let me know what the answer is. So as you can see, uh, this is perfect for uh, those of us who have pets, you know, cats on keyboards. Oh my gosh. I've got one who loves to type. And so um, uh, that's that's fun. So what if I tell it I don't know? Now, when I tell it I don't know, um, it's like, hey, I got you here. And it explains some more details. Tell me what the, tells me how to find the correct answers. You know, it's like, hey, this is going to be de encapsulation. Here's some more information on it. And then it'll continue asking me, hey, do you want some more questions on this? And so I can continue this until I work my way down through all seven layers of the OSI model. Now, I'm sure I'm probably the only person going, OSI oh, yes, model, geeking on that. Um, so I won't go too much further with that. But you get the idea here of how you can use this as a quiz master and have it quiz you on information and help you learn that information. So I, I like that quite a bit. All right, I'm going to head over to ChatGPT for a uh second or two. And I'm going to show you another way that I can use um, this to help me learn. So let's say that um, I am a beginning programming student and I've got some code that I don't understand. So I'm going to say, hey, chat GPT, I'm a beginning programming student. We explain the following code line by line. And thankfully, yeah. ChatGPT will break that down for me line by line. It will show me the code and it will tell me what it is. Like up here, I've got three um, quotes in a row and it says, hey, this means it's a comment and it's going to provide a brief description of the purpose of the program. So, okay, this program reverses numbers stored in an array. Okay, cool. And then it'll go down and tell me, okay, here's a comment. Um, about a function called reverse array that you should implement below. And then here's starting actually implementing this. 
So when I work down again, line by line, you can see this is teaching me what that program does so that I have a greater understanding of using the code. And typically, um, when I get down here, it tells me, okay, you know, we've reached the end here and um, this is what each line of that code does. So now if I go through and I study that, it's like, oh, that makes perfect sense. Now, I know I rushed through that um, pretty quickly, but I have a lot of things I hope to, to get through. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to just jump right in and ask those as well. Another thing that we can do with um, AI is create what we call personal learning paths. And there's several ways that we can do this. Now I'm over at Deep AI and I'm going to tell it that I'm a complete beginner and I'm looking to learn about deep belief networks. Can you provide me with a detailed explanation of what deep belief networks are? including their purpose and how they're used. Additionally, can you break down the mathematical concepts behind deep belief networks in a way that's easy for beginners to understand? Lastly, can you recommend any additional resources such as books, online courses, or tutorials that would be beneficial for someone looking to further their understanding of deep belief networks? So once I put that in, it'll take it just a few minutes, as you can see the progress bar going across. And you'll have to forgive, the only thing I really don't like about um, Deep AI is the ads, tons of ads here. So that's going to bring me back um, some information about Deep Belief Networks. And it's going to offer me several resources down here, as well as I can ask it additional questions if there's something that I don't understand about the deep belief uh, networks. Maybe I don't understand the difference between the visible layer and the hidden layer. I can go in or it's brought a new term here, RBMs. Maybe I can ask it, what's an RBM? and um, have it give me um, information back with that. And notice that you've always got summarize as well. So if this is one of those where it seems like it is too long, um, I can have that summarized. And then it comes back and it'll tell me more. So anything I have to ask about the deep belief network, I can continue to ask here and it will keep um, sending me information and helping me learn. And as I learn, it guides me through the things that I know, but the things I don't know, it's going to help me figure out. So providing me some personalized learning. So I think that's a really fun use. Um, another one, and one of the reasons why I uh, like this uh, deep AI that my students have uh, given me the heads up on, is it has different AI chat modes and you can chat with what they call its AI characters. So um, math, yeah, let's go to the math AI. So um, I've got that math AI up. Um, it was funny, they uh, described this one as everybody's favorite math instructor. Uh, it's the funky new math instructor. It's an AI powered whiz kid. From algebra to geometry, there's no problem too big for our digital Einstein. So, um, and it says that it's a really cool teacher. So um, let's say I am that geometry student and I'm like, hmm. So what if I ask it, um, am I giving an equation? And this is gonna be a fairly common equ <laughs> equation. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So please help me understand this equation.
So once we uh, get this in, this will provide me a really super duper nifty um, explanation. So now I learned that, hey, that's the uh, Pythagorean theorem and that we use it in geometry. Okay, yes. And we use it to find the length of the side of a right triangle. So it'll go through and describe to me. So in your right triangle, the side that's opposite the right angle, which is the long side, is called the hypotenuse. And the other two sides are called the legs. So in this um, equation here, A and B are the length of the legs of the triangle, and C is going to be the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, that makes sense so far. And then it says to use it, follow these steps. And it will follow the steps through. Um, so let's say I have a bigger question now. Um, I don't know how to find a square root. Can you explain that to me? So we'll put it out through there and it'll go through and it'll come up with a method to help me explain a question that I had about the about the answer that it gave me. And so it'll go down through there. Um, and for those of you who are sitting there going, um, you know, I'll be honest with you, math is not my strong suit. If it's binary to decimal to hex, I got it covered. But, you know, sometimes the, the other math is just so over my head that I just don't know what in the world to do with it. So... I didn't know how to put in, okay, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So I ask it, hey, um, how do I put in an equation that has numbers that are uh, squared? And it gave that information back to me. Another thing you could do is you can use, thank goodness, um, English. How about this one? Can you teach me how to find the area of a circle? So no equation involved here, just plain English. And I'll ask it, hey, help me find the area of the circle. And the great thing is it will actually go through and teach me how to do that. So it's giving me a formula here, and it's explaining the formula. And here's a step-by-step -step guide um, on how I should find the area of a circle. So that works out great. Another fun one that they've got uh, that I also enjoy is Proofreader. All right, so in this case, I'm going to switch. They have this nice um, AI proofreader. I'll switch this and I'm going to um, ask it if it will be kind enough to um, proof this. And I'm telling it that I'm using the MLA style. So I pasted in this paper that I've really slaved over. All right. And then it will go through. And you'll notice that it's um, making some interesting um, comments here. So uh, I go through, I've given it um, my work cited, I've asked it to go through and proofread it, and it's it's done that. And it tells me down here that it's looked at everything and it's made a few changes. And you'll notice that there are some uh, little... Um, stars here this is indicating that it has made a change um, there for that so in my um, first piece when I um, 
put it in. I had some, um, as you can see, misspelled words here. And it's helped um, highlight those for me. And it's made suggested changes down here below it. So I know um, what it is that I need to do. So again, we can use this to improve our writing. Uh, we can tell it what um, style we're using, if we're using APA style or anything else, it can go through that. All right, so um, other fun things that I kind of like to do with it. One of the questions I get asked a lot um, teaching technology from my students is, hey, um, is there a game for this? Is there like a game I could play that would help me learn this material? <laughs> and sometimes I'll look out and I'll have like a binary game. Well, I go out here to Cisco's binary game and you'll be doing binary to decimal, decimal to binary in no times. But sometimes that is not really the case. So what if I go out and I ask uh, ChatGPT, hey, ChatGPT, can you help me create a text-based adventure game that teaches community college students how to take good notes? And it will come up with something. Sometimes it's good and it's easy to implement. Other times it's uh, not good. And you can tell it to regenerate it and come up with something better. So uh, in this case, um, it says that you're a, a student at Community College University, CCU. And with exams looming, you realize your notes are messy and unorganized. And determined to improve, you mark on a, embark on a quest to master the art of um, note taking. So it has a, um, a game layout for us, a gameplay for us that we can go through. And then our objectives and what our end game are. And then our technical imp implementation. In this case, it's like, hey, Tanya, you could write this using Python. It thinks I know more than I do. But it is definitely something that's kind of uh, fun to take a look at. Um, and again, let's say that you're like, eh, I'm not feeling that one. No problem. Just... Um, Go in and tell it using the previous prompt. Create a new game. And then it'll try to go through and come up with that. Now this one, because I told it to use the previous prompt, is going to be close to what um, it generated before. And then I can ask it again. And anyway, you get the idea here that you can go through and you can have tons of fun learning um, and creating learning games for your students. One of the things I've been experimenting with is crossword puzzles uh, for vocabulary for my networking students. Um, one of my students recently says, oh my gosh, there's so many acronyms. You know, if you guys can abbreviate something in technology, you do it. And the answer is yes, yes, we do. And so I have been working on using um, the uh, different chat bots to create a um, crossword puzzle for us to use so that it will give them the uh, definition and they have to figure out what the, um, the acronym is. So again, it's just kind of fun little things that I can do to um, make it more interesting for them. Now, the one that I hit upon, oh, this is just recent. Like last night, I was like, oh, wow. So at the end of my modules, I will have like a reflection questionnaire. And in here, this is an assignment that I ask of the students. Uh, they get participation credit for this. And I ask them four questions. One, what was the easiest topic for you in this module? Two, what topic did you struggle with in the module? Three, what resources would you like to see added to this module? And four, what can I, your instructor, do to make this module better? So typically what I do is like most of you, I'll go in here and I'll take a look at the responses, you know? Well, then it hit me, you know, I can download this. 
And I was like, oh, wow. Yes. So I've got all the fun stuff here, including a student who has included the galactic uh, standard alphabet. So good fun stuff with that. But, you know, I can look at the uh, summary. I can look at the feedback. And the cool thing with this is, is I can actually download this. Oh, let me get back to the right place. Sorry, I was clicking too much. All right. So I can go in and I can grab this information and download it. So when I came over to download, I can choose how to download it. If I want to be like an Excel file or whatever, um, I actually did choose the Excel file and I chose to download this. And then I opened the file up. Enable editing. And the first thing I did was I took away uh, the identifiable information. So now that has been separated out and I just have the questions and I have the responses to the questions. So with that being done, um, I went in and created a prompt for ChatGPT with this information. And basically I said, you know, hey, chat GPT, I teach um, artificial intelligence at a community college. I want you to act as my teaching assistant. I have a table with student feedback in it. I want you to analyze the data and provide me with three action items I can take to immediately improve the module for the students. And so I gave it the data. And I set back to see what ChatGPT would come up with for me. So in this case, I'm definitely learning from my, my learners. So um, they told me here, okay, provide additional lecture videos and simplified explanations. So it said that many of the students struggled with understanding certain topics such as neural networks and deep learning networks. So the action was create additional lecture videos covering these challenging topics, focusing on providing simplified explanation and examples. Okay, good stuff. Clarify explanations for complex algorithms and models. So in this one, we talked about, we introduced the self-organizing map and deep belief networks. And we didn't dive too deep into the mathematics behind it because well, it's an introduction. <laughs> and it wasn't ready for that, but that was something that they were ready to deep dive into was the mathematics. And then um, I found this interesting. It told me, hey, there's a student that accidentally lost their uh, work in an assignment to a technical um, issue. So what I did is I went out and looked to, hey, which one of these students had problems? And I reached out to them and offered them some help with that. But looking at this, I was like, hmm, this is really uh, fantastic information. So what if I take that and it's telling me that they want to know more about um, self-organizing maps and um, deep belief networks. Okay. So, hey, chat GPT. New create a video script. Uh, actually, I'll just paste in what I've got here. So I'm going to ask it to create a video for explaining Psalms and DBNs in language that a student who has never understood the concepts would understand it. And I did this with a couple different I like to use the different um, GPTs to try to find out which one um, I like best. But now I have a video script that I can use um, with it. And it's got, hey, there's a title slide called Introduction to Self-Organizing Maps and Deep Belief Networks. Background music fading in. Okay. 
So then it says, hey, put in an animated graphic of neural networks. Fantastic. Now it's got this whole script ready for me to go. Now what I can do with this is I can read it and decide, hey, yeah, I like this. This is totally cool. Or eh, maybe it needs a little bit of tweaking. But I can combine this with a step that we learned in this week's Teaching and Learning. So in this week's Teaching and Learning, a spoiler alert, if you haven't read the newsletter yet, I'm getting ready to spoil part of it. But they made the comment of, yeah, there's stuff that you want to change in your course. Uh, put yourself a hidden note here. So I've put in a uh, list of hidden note to update. And I can come in here and I can do something as simple as uh, make video on some and deep belief networks. Or you know what? I can take that information that I just got from ChatGPT and paste that in. Now this is hidden from the students. The students are not going to see that, but now I've made myself a, um, a good note of, hey, add this in. The students want that. So again, I was learning from our learners and I really, um, I really enjoyed that. And Tanya, to do that, to create that note, it was just, it would just add an activity and what tool did you use at the, to add that? That's a great question. All I did is I came in and I click add the activity or resource and I chose the text and media area and just made a note to self. And uh, important note there. Then I just came up to the visibility, hide on course page, save and return to course. And that way I've got that ready. So if I'm not ready to make this video right this very moment, it is something that I can go back to and say, oh yeah, you know, I wanted to make this video. I remember now I asked ChatGPT about it and it generated a video script for me. So now I have that in there that I can use and it, it would just kind of uh, worked out really nicely. So I'm kind of documenting the things that I want to change in my course as I uh, go through or go along. Thank you for that question. So what questions do you guys have? I've thrown a lot of stuff out there and probably your brains are like, what, what, what? So what questions do you have? Uh, what would you like to see here? And feel free to take yourself off mute uh, or put, put your question in the chat. We'll see it either way. I'm not an instructor here, but I've signed up for all the AI stuff just to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm realizing that I a lot of what I'm taking away from these is how to use them. Like I don't think of the stuff of how to use them well outside of, um, you know, like offshoots like these, this series, this spring, how would you suggest people learn how to use the different ways to utilize AI outside of like seminars and stuff? Well, I'll tell you what I do. Um, now, obviously I get to teach AI, so <laughs> I'm doing my homework when I'm doing this, but, um, Let's go over here to Gemini and let's start a new question. Just go in and ask the chat bot. Um, say, you know, I want to learn how to um, ask you questions about marketing. Can you... Uh, Tell me how to best prompt you. And what you're going to find, we can put this same question in on all of these different um, chatbots. And I use a bunch of different chatbots because I want everybody to, you know, hey, go out there and try. Uh, one of the reasons I like to use Deep AI, even though it's got a lot of commercials, all, all of my students have told me, hey, this one has been the best math tutor for me. 
So I'm like, okay, that's great. So here I've asked it how to do it. And uh, Gemini comes back and says, okay, here are some tips on how to ask me marketing questions. Define your goal. Are you looking for general marketing knowledge? You know, ask open-ended questions instead of things like, is social uh, media marketing effective? Try what are some benefits and drawbacks of using social media marketing for the new brand? Provide context about your situation. And then it tells you things like leverage my strengths, you know, data and trends. I can find, provide insights from marketing research. I can help you brainstorm. I can do comparison and analysis. You know, here are some good questions to ask me. And it gives you some great examples um, with that. Another thing like, a, and each one will ask you something a little bit different. You know, um, I'm a beginning programming student. How can I ask you or how can I write effective prompts for you to teach me? And it'll come back. And one of the things that um, you'll find several times, I'll tell you, hey, be clear, you know, what language are you working in? Provide the content, context, ask the questions one at a time. Uh, one of the things that I have found really funny with chat and GPT, uh, when I chat with it more, it will come out. And one of the things it recommends is, hey, say, hey, chat GPT, you know, um, say bye when you leave. The other thing I will tell you to do is treat this like a trusted colleague. Um, one of the things that I think is super duper fun is you can tell it to assume a role. Okay. So let's say I don't know anything about um, impressionistic art. So I will say to chat GTT, I'll always say hello to him or her or it to start the conversation um, and tell it, um, I want you to assume you are an expert in impressionism art. Please talk to me about, uh, let's say, themes and techniques associated with that style of art. And by telling it to assume the role, what we find a lot of times that when you're working with chatbots, that if you tell it a context or assume the role, it will provide you a better result. And the reason it provides you with a better result is you've told it how over all the stuff you know about, Here's what I want to know about. So I want you to improve, you know, you're an expert. Tell me what you think. And so it'll go out and um, provide all kinds of great information for you. Um, one of my things is, again, ask the chatbot how, how it wants to be spoken to. Uh, ChatGPT likes it when you say, hey, and it likes it when you tell it bye. <laughs> I found I tend to get better answers out of that. But do treat it like a trusted colleague. Um, a lot of the times that I'll, things that I'll do with it is I'll be like, hey, I work at a community college and, you know, I'll tell it what I'm looking for and um, I'll tell it to take a role. Sometimes I'll ask it to be a community college student and ask it to help me plan a class. But, you know, that role play set up with it. Uh, works wonders asking it you know what is the best way um like let me see if i can clear out here um teach me how to write effective prompts to get information about um All right, we'll go out there, duck pills. So 
So let's say I'm looking at DuckTales, the cartoon. And the reason why I'm doing that is, you know, I have Scrooge here. I hope I'm holding him as one of my uh, boys. So anyway, it'll go out there and then it'll say, okay, here's how you can do this. And the other thing that I do a lot, um, and I'll just ask it for general things, um, create a prompt for me to uh, give you to teach me about Someone toss out a topic. Anybody? Uh, making uh, the perfect marinara sauce. That actually is a question of mine. Okay. <laughs> and that works great. Um, and it comes back and tells me, hey, tell me this. All right, I'm going to copy this. It says, uh, tell it that I'd love to learn how to make a delicious marinara sauce from scratch. Can you walk me through the key steps involved, including some options for customization? All right, so um, let's see how it did. I'm going to take the prompt that it just told me, and it's going to tell me, hey, making marinara is a breeze. And it's going to go through and tell me how to do all the stuff and how to customize it. Do I want chunky sauce, you know, um, freshness, spice. And it's giving me some great tips like using San Marzano tomatoes. I love those. So, yeah, ask it. Don't be afraid to do that um, because it's kind of an expert on itself. So you can ask for tips. You can ask for the prompt itself. And again, just remember to tell it things like, um, I've got a couple of different things that I tried. Now, you guys saw that um, I had asked for a, uh, to create a video explaining um, Psalms and DBNs and um, language that a student who's never studied the concepts would understand before. Okay, what if I change that just a tad bit? And I said, create a video explaining Psalms and DBNs in language a second grader would understand. So try several different uh, levels. You know, what level of expertise are you looking for here? And hey, here we go. And it's got me this great, fantastic um, second grade level uh, discussion of um, psalms and uh, dbns so that's the other thing i tell people role play tell it what level you are if you're a beginner tell it you're a beginner um if you're an expert hey tell it you're an expert if you want it to be the expert you tell it it is the expert and it will come back to that and if you've ever um like since we're here we've got all these tips uh on this one um you can copy that, you can share it, you can do some more things. You can ask it things like, um, can you uh, share with me how you made the choices to create the marinara sauce? And it'll come back and say, hey, this is what I made. Uh, the, this is how I made my decision. I was looking at simplicity, versatility, taste and quality, and accessibility. Then it talks a little bit, you know, the reason I chose olive oil is uh, why onion and garlic? Why canned tomatoes? Why dried oregano but fresh basil? <laughs> you know, And it tells us here, you know, it's a great question. And this tells us here, hey, the dried oregano is totally fine, but we like the fresh basil because it's got a brighter, more vibrant flavor. So you could do that. You can also ask at which sources um, it used to come up with the decision that it did. So, you know, those are always ways that you can um, look at the prompt 
and ask the prompt, hey, what's going on here? And especially, I will tell you, if you think that the prompt may be like um, off, that it isn't telling you exactly what it is, that there's something there that you don't understand, ask it to explain its choice to you, and it will do that. So um, again, fun stuff to learn with, to experiment, to play with. I hope that answered your question. Do you have more questions? Because I would love to, to hear them. This is the things I think about all day long. I'm surprised no one has come up with the, uh, can you predict who will win the NCAA men's basketball 2024 tournament since we are in the middle of uh, March Madness let's see what Gemini has to say <laughs> so it's going to tell you flat up hey that's hard to do it's called March Madness for a reason so here's your current favorites uh, UConn followed by Houston Cougars and some have gone against the grain and picked Tennessee now, we all know the real answer to this is uh, the University of North Carolina. But, you know, we can't expect Jim and I to play favorites or anything. All right, what other questions do we have, y'all? Uh, I'm hoping this will uh, help you learn and it'll inspire you to go out and learn because that's what this is all about, is learning. And learning, you know, for whatever your personal goals are. Jamie wants to learn to make a good marinara sauce. I'm just hoping to get my Japanese well enough to that I can look at the uh, signs and direct my nephews to the right place when we, <laughs> when we make our trip to Japan. You know, so we're looking at that. But again, I'm looking at learning from my students as well and combining the feedback that they're giving me with actionable items I can take. Because, I mean, let's face it, we all want to change our classes, or maybe it's just me, but I always want to change my class. Every semester, I want to do something a little bit different. And I usually do, but, you know, getting the feedback from the students, hey, what is it that you need? What is it that you want here? And being able to go, okay, give me three things I can reasonably do. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. It's really been very helpful in um, creating this class. Uh, I've got another question, actually. I, and if anybody yeah. else has one, uh, please, uh, please uh, jump, jump in. But with uh, earlier you were... Uh, generating some test questions and quiz questions. And uh, I'm just curious if, if someone has, like, like you, they're just in the constant state of refreshing and, and thinking mm -hmm. about different ways to do things. Uh, can you suggest some ways that maybe you have, maybe you have an assignment that's feeling, feeling a little stale? Um, how, how, what techniques, because uh, you, you did some, uh, some question generation, but how, how can you go beyond that? Well, one of my favorite things to do, um, and I was going to see if I can, here, uh, I'm just going to click this one um, about writing the spreadsheet formula um, to see if it will take me into a little bit deeper. Usually I have, there we go. I have all my pages up. One of the things that I do, in addition to the quizzes and things like that, I will take, um, and I have a lot here. <laughs> to uh, go through, um, I will take uh, my assignment and I will run it through here and ask it first to improve the instructions. Let me uh, pull up an assignment over here. Like, and I'll just um, copy this. So, I'm just copying one of my assignments right now, and um, I will go over here, and I'll be like, hey, Gemini, I need to update this assignment. Please improve the 
directions for clarity and make the topic something uh, college students are interested in. And I forgot to paste in the thing. So um, <laughs> now it's a uh, to go and refer into it. Hey, Tanya, let's focus on work instead of that. So um, I'm going to actually. Let me put in my assignment. Oops. Well, anyway, it'll roll through because it knows what I'm doing that. So I've put in like a scenario for it and I basically want it to go through and um, update the instructions. So. Instructions for clarity. And make it about a topic college students are interested in. There we go. And this is one of the things that I'll do is it will really um, help them out. So my original one is um, that you were a news a reporter with expertise in deep learning and you're asked to write an article on deep learning applications and you've decided to focus on facial recognition, exploring one wor real world application and its associated in, uh, ethical implications. So now it has changed this to um, convenience or big brother examining facial recognition on college campuses and uh, coming up with some um, new things that we can do to um, help them uh, create this. That's one way. Um, some things, I, sometimes what I'll do is um, I will take, um, again, an assignment that I've had previously and ask them to update. Sometimes I really like the assignment itself. Maybe I want to uh, improve the instruction. So, um, I will go out and pick an assignment. Let me grab some text here. And I'll get over to chat GPT. Please improve the directions on this assignment. And um, it'll come through there and it will make up some really great directions for me. So I'll use it for that. Um, you can ask it to create quizzes um, for you and it will create quizzes. Just always make sure you double check them <laughs> because sometimes uh, it'll ask questions that um, just aren't right there. Or let's say that you've got something that is a um, an assignment. You've got a quiz. You can copy the quiz, paste it in, and say, okay, this is a quiz I give my students. Can you transform this into another type of assignment, such as a writing assignment or an assignment that uses formulas in Excel? And you can paste that out, and it will give you back some really good stuff. Um, I've used it quite a bit. Um, like here is um, a concept that um, I came up with. Where I wanted it to, um, and you can use it to create rubrics too. Oh my gosh, five stars on that. I use it uh, quite a bit for that. But you can go up and um, tell it that you want to, um, well, those are the rubrics. I was trying to find one where I could actually show you that I've got through here. So here's uh, one that's um, a fun one. So let's say that you're doing PowerPoint and you're like, okay, um, you know, I want you to create an assignment using PowerPoint that um, people talk about their favorite childhood toys. 
And so then it'll go through and it'll be like, okay. And it creates this assignment for you. And you can use that to update it as well. So I use that quite a bit. Um, I bounce ideas off of it. One of the things I try to do and it doesn't do such a great job with, um, and it may be that I don't know how to ask the right question yet, is um, I'll ask it out. Here's all the material. I have got this, this, and this. What is the best way to arrange it for college students to retrain the information? And sometimes it gives me some good ideas. And then other times it's like, oh gosh, where did that come from? But again, take everything with a grain of salt and go out. The big thing, y'all, is for me to play with it. Go out, play with it. See what it can do for you. And you'll get better at asking it questions. You can also, um, if you go out and Google, we had the question earlier, how do you create a good prompt? Just go out and do that. So I got a question here. Uh, do you know of any AI that can recognize an image and describe it? For example, if I like the style of the art in a child's storybook and I don't know the art style, uh, could I show an image from the book to a known AI and find out what style it is? Absolutely. There are a ton out there that do image recognition that can uh, provide you with that same information. Um, you can also look at things like Mid Journey tends to be a really popular one where you can go out and take a look at that. And they'll have different styles for you. And you can ask it, hey, what style is this? In addition to that, if you'd like to, you could create your own that would recognize that. So um, there's a lot of great great things out there. You know, I've looked today primarily at text-based um, chatbots for learning, but there are certainly tons of things you can do with image-based chatbots as well. well. What other questions do we have? Yeah, we've got about four more minutes in, in the session, so um, if you have anything to add, um, please please do it in the, in, in the next few minutes. Again, I encourage all of you, go out, try it, play with it, have fun with it. Sometimes you don't get, um, sometimes you don't get the results that you were looking for, but sometimes you strike gold. And when you strike gold, I usually keep a little notebook of, hey, I really struck gold with this. The reason I struck gold was, and I look at all the things that I asked in the prompt and then I'll just try to repeat those ask in other prompts. So I tried to learn from it. And again, ask it as well. And the other fun thing um, that I love to do is um, you'll see that I've got Van Gogh's um, style down here. Um, and so I will talk to it. And I told it like, assume that you're Vincent Van Gogh. Given that persona, explain his stylistic developments. And so ChatGPT came back with me and says, hey, I am Vincent Van Gogh, the Dutch post-impressionist painter. Let me take you on my stylistic um, developments and uh, walk me through it. So don't be afraid to have some fun with it. Very cool. Uh, Emily, did that answer your question about the AI? Okay. Yeah, it's um, there, there's so many tools out there. It's really... It's overwhelming. It's uh, a lot to keep up with. Yeah. Even even as uh, even as tech savvy educators and and people who are forward thinking, it's uh, they're you know finding what works for you and what gives you the prompt you want is is everything. Uh, so it really is, and and it's tons of fun, and you get better at it. You know, um, you keep working at it, you keep hammering at it, mm -hmm. and you know other things that we didn't even talk about. We didn't talk about Conmigo, which uh, Conmigo looks great. Um, as a general rule, I'll be honest with you, I haven't paid for any um, AI yet hmm. because, you know, I'm on a budget and I haven't decided which one I like, but like Conmigo is great. Um, for those of you who do like uh, foreign languages, um, the Duolingo uh, has an AI integration into it that does a personal pathway through a language with you. That has been really great. I was just reading today about how their prompt engineers get that to happen. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's fabulous. <laughs> I definitely <laughs> bookmarked that one. Yeah. Hmm. Very cool. Um, well, if there aren't any other questions, um, I'll, I'll um, 
uh, thank you so much for your time and, uh, and sharing this with us. Um, uh, again, this is this recording will be available uh, within the next few hours as soon as uh, you can get prompt uh, uh, ran through the through the washer, whatever whatever it's called. Um, so, uh, but again, thank you for joining us, um, and thanks thanks Tanya for for everything uh, you've given us today. I appreciate you. Thank you. I hope everyone has a great break. Yeah, same same to you.